This program contains candid discussion of gender identity and may include adult topics and language. Listener discretion is advised. This episode of Trans Chat is being brought to you by True Voice Lessons, LLC. Offering the finest in online voice and music instruction, True Voice has what you're looking for. Transgender voice training, singing, guitar, piano, and much, much more. Let our highly qualified staff of instructors help you achieve your goals. TrueVoiceLessons.com. Unlock your true voice today. Trans Chat with Christiana. And welcome to Trans Chat. Real people, real lives, real talk. I'm your host, Christiana Brecky. Namaste, our Sunen Kelia Danyavad. On this episode, we recognize Mental Health Awareness Month and the unique mental health challenges of the trans community. I'll share a short, intimate piece from my book, Becoming, Belonging, and Blossoming. Then I'll join the cackling hands for a more in-depth discussion of the topic. I hope you'll stick around for that. I have depression and anxiety. And like so many, I was once very ashamed of it. I saw it as indicative of my lack of strength weakness of character, and the result of my poor choices and misfortunes. Growing up as a male, these things were reinforced by society's strict standards of male conduct, to always be stoic, focused, and in control. But in recent years, increased awareness has been breaking down those barriers. Admitting and facing one's mental health issues is no longer weak or cowardly. To the contrary, it takes a lot of guts to step out of your comfort zone and talk about it. And with that little self-pep talk, I'm going to read an excerpt from my book, Becoming, Belonging, and Blossoming, a small chapter in which I expose my depression for the beast he truly is. When the beast comes to feast. I get a tightness in my tummy that quickly spreads throughout the rest of my body. I shake. Breaths become shallow and rapid. I close the doors to all logic and sense. I start crying and I can't stop. And then whatever negative thoughts and emotions happen to be freshest in my mind suddenly become life-ending calamities. I feel like the fate of the world rests on my shoulders, but I've no idea what to do, so I curl up and cry, repeating to myself the most awful things. I'm such a loser. I can't do anything right. What's the point in living? The world would be better off without me. I wish I would die. I've been feeding the beast for so long, I don't know how to stop. It's no wonder he keeps coming back for more, the ravenous dog. Of course, I do what I can to avoid him. Keep my thoughts happy, stay busy, count my blessings, self-care, meditation and prayer, music, writing. I've read books, studied and reflected. I've absorbed the lessons, and I utilize the techniques as well and as often as possible. I've talked to therapists and taken the pills. It makes no difference. He has a way of finding me wherever I am or whatever I'm doing. He's cruel and relentless, indiscriminate and insatiable. He's a monster. 
he's my depression. And yeah, my depression monster is figuratively male. Because only a man could be so merciless and wield such power over me. Sometimes he comes in an instant, without warning or reason, like a summer cold that hits from out of nowhere, unexpected and unwarranted. Other times, I bring him on myself, inadvertently, of course, but still the result of my own doing. Sometimes he stays for weeks, like an annoying relative with boundary issues, always around, hungry and restless. In some dark, demented corner of my consciousness, I think I sort of miss him when he's not here devouring my soul. How messed up is that? Sometimes he's gone in a day. There's no way to know. Why me? Am I that bad a person? I've asked myself lots of questions trying to figure it out. And I often blame myself, which only makes things worse. It's no mystery. Like any beast, he feeds, but not on flesh or in fields. This monster consumes a strict diet of fear, anxiety, self-loathing, and hopelessness. Mental and emotional entrees, I am a master chef at preparing in my mind and then serving up for him on a silver platter. Other than being trans, my life's struggles are no worse than those of any average person. Everybody has hardships, whatever their nature. Some, me included, have relatively few. Be that as it may, I am apparently less able to cope, so I turn my thoughts and feelings inward and allow the monster to come in and gorge upon my spirit at his leisure. The beast lies to me. He tells me I'm right to have no confidence or self-esteem, that I deserve to be unhappy and depressed because of who and what I am, because of the choices and mistakes I've made. He tells me I'm a failure, that nothing I do will ever accomplish or mean anything to anybody. I should give up on my dreams and give in to despair. He tells me I'm a lousy writer and nobody will ever read my meaningless, self-absorbed dribble. That my books will all wind up on the steaming heap of self-published shite, having made no impact whatsoever in the world of literature. He may be right about this one. I don't know. He tells me I'm a joke of a musician and that people laugh when they hear my songs, cover or original. Intellectually, I know he's wrong. I'm a damn fine musician. I just can't help but believe him sometimes. He tells me to stay home and avoid people because I will only infect them with my depression and nobody really likes me anyway. He tells me nobody will miss me when I die, that my life is as valueless to society as a stray dog's and my passing won't even get a blurb in the local newspaper's obituary. He may be right about this one too, <laughs> who can say? He tells me that no good man will ever love me, that my chromosomes and genitals have condemned me to a life of loneliness and ridicule that I could never satisfy a man sexually. An absurd assertion indeed, considering my unique knowledge of the male appendage and precisely what it takes to make it feel good. Sometimes the beast tells me the truth or some twisted version of it. He tells me I'm fat and it's my fault. Eating is one of my favorite self-soothing activities I self-soothe because I'm depressed. It's an unending cycle of depression, overeating, and guilt that is more than evident to me every time I look in a mirror. 
He tells me conservatives are not finished trying to tweet me out of existence. Not even close. As if I needed anything to remind me of that. Some beasts are undeniably real. If my depression monster had a face, he'd look a lot like Donald J. Trump in that grumpy-ass White House portrait. The beast tells me I'm not a real woman. A lot. Like, daily. He loves to dine on my gender dysphoria, the piece de resistance of my mental, emotional dinner menu. So tender and well-seasoned, like a slow-roasted prime rib. It melts in his mouth. So stop feeding the beast. Sure, no problem. All I have to do is retrain my stubborn brain and unlearn decades of destructive thought behavior. Easy peasy. It's an ongoing exercise, and we all know how hard it can be to get to the gym. It takes continual, conscious effort to keep my thoughts steered in a happy direction. Lose focus for a moment, and it's easy to make a wrong turn and take another spin down the freeway of fear and self-hatred. A trap gets set, and all the bad thoughts and feelings lurking in the shadows of my mind suddenly re-emerge to further nourish the beast. The more I feed him, the longer he stays. Avoiding the beast is impossible. All I can do is help keep him at bay with positive thinking and plenty of self-affirmation. I try to think of my depression as the common ailment it is, like getting food poisoning or that nasty summer cold bug. It can't always be prevented. Sometimes my mind is like an FM radio and I can't always control what gets broadcast over the airwaves. I just try to remind myself, although I feel hopeless and weepy beyond solace, that it's not my fault, even if it feels like a lie at the time. It's just an illness and will pass. Sure enough, so far it has. If the time comes when it does not, God help me. Real people, real lives, real talk. Trans Chat with Christiana. I'm Mossy. I'm Katie. I'm Christy. And, and we're, we're the Cacklin Hens. <laughs> I, I, I can. I'm very quick at picking up what's behind um, what people say. I can tell immediately if, if their intentions are aggressive or uh, disparaging. Sure. I, I don't care what they say. I can tell it. Yeah. And um, I, I'm learning. I'm learning not to get riled up because it's that isn't very. I can't do that. So I've got to learn not to do that. You don't um, actually, Marcy. I'm pretty thick skin now. I, I share that with you. When I get misgendered, it does something to me. I don't know why. I know others have said, you know, you don't take it personally, whatever. But when somebody, it feels like you're being bullied sometimes if they repeatedly do that after they've been corrected. And they kind of do that the next time, you know, and you're always constantly, when I feel, I always have to constantly, unfortunately, especially family members who overstep those boundaries, they, they routinely do that. And it really hurts. It's like, oh, here's a, here's a, here's a, here's a fight. I can't, I can't let go. You know, I, it really bothers me that people would misgender me. Maybe I'm just overly sensitive about it, but I'm really kind yeah. of this hypersensitivity no, I, I, to that. Myself, so. I don't. I don't think you're hypersensitive about it, Casey. I don't think you're oversensitive. I think. I think. I think we're all out there. We're all in public. We're all. It's obvious that we're. We. It's obvious what that we would like to be um, treated as as ladies. 
and it's it's and when people don't do that, it's they're being deliberately rude. Um, and I, I'm, I'm just, I just have to learn to learn a, an appropriate response, really. Um, well, I think there is a difference, though. I think it, it's, I don't think it's always malicious, you know. So, f like you said, you get good at knowing, it, you know, what the intent is behind it. If it's somebody I've known a long time, like um, not too long ago, I was helping my brother-in-law do something or another out here. I don't remember what it was. And he asked for a wrench or something, and I handed the wrench. And just out of, quickly out of just habit, he said, thank you, sir, but yeah. then corrected himself right away yeah. you know, Im immediately. But that was just an inherent – it was yeah. an automatic response. It wasn't something he uh, thought no, about. No. His mind was completely on yeah. the project that he was yeah. working on, and that was just an automatic response. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I can I can live with that. I'm you know that's that's understandable. Yes. Um, and enough you know if he does it enough times, he'll eventually yeah. get to where he won't. Um, yeah. But I know that he doesn't mean it um, because no. you know he ta he talks with um, Jody all the time, and they never yeah. refer to me as anything but she. Yeah. Um, and so I know that it was not um, malicious. Does it still sting a little bit? A little. Yeah. Yeah. A little. You can't deny that it still stings no. a little bit. But, um, no. you know, you, I can't, you know, I, I, early on I was, no. I, it wouldn't matter the intent or whatever. It would just kill me, you know, to, yeah. to do it. But then I got to the point where, okay, I can understand, yeah. you know, if it's somebody I've known a long, long time and it's just a habitual yeah. Um, thing a part of me is mm -hmm. glad that they still mm -hmm. see me um, and, yeah. and appreciate me as much as they did back then yeah. um, so it's, it's like just like what you said it's a matter of understanding the intent and we, we yeah. get good at reading it I think right yeah. away <laughs> I think we just yeah. we learn that skill yeah. right away yeah I, 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 I have to do something about my temper because because uh, I, I um I don't know when, when when you get when you get run down and and when you know when you feel a bit hurt about things and, and then someone deliberately, deliberately hurts you, you know I can I can either I can either just be sad and turn away or I'm just tempted to open my mouth and I, I can't I'm, I I I'm, I'm I am trying to learn that I can't do that because I'm not being a lady then. Um, I'm just very thick-skinned, so I just learned to be very thick-skinned about it. Actually, I think, I think <laughs> but you're right. You're right. That comes that comes to that behavior um, aspect and the stuff we were talking about earlier about okay, how do you how do you behave like a woman? Um, and part of that is finding a way to not be the aggressor. You know, we just that you know women that you know if you're an aggressive woman, you're a bitch, and if you know if you're an aggressive trans woman, then you're just still a dude. Uh, yeah. That's the kind of the perception. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I've, I, I've, I'm becoming increasingly sharp, and not in a male, male aggressive way, but, but I, I can be very quick to um, uh, say something quite witty, and it can be pretty cutting as well, actually. Uh, but not, 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 not. I wouldn't not to be aggressive about it, but um, because you know, because I, I, I'm, I'm like a, I, to, to admit, I, I'm like um. My my ner my nerves and my uh, pride and my emotions are are red, are red raw sometimes, and um and my honor I just feel my honor's at stake sometimes, so um it, I sh I'm learning that shouldn't necessarily be the case. I, sh I I've I've come a long way from standing on male pride. I've come a long long way, um but it's just when you're a bit down and you're a bit tired and um. And then some, someone's nasty that you, you know, I, 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 I just kind of, I can, I can be, I can pretty devastating, in, but not in an aggressive way. But um, I can use use my brain to think of something to say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, that, 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 that's good because for me and and actually Christy had some good things to say too about that is is for me I, I just am reactive it's like I'm anal retentive or something especially with somebody who's known me all these years I can't expect them to automatically switch even though even though it's been years later and they still do it I uh, you know 
It, it's been since well, 20... Well, that's like I said. you got to understand the intent. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. I, I've got to learn to... Yeah, but there's a lot of things I need to learn. <laughs> if I could just yeah. quit talking yeah. about it and put them yeah. in practice, uh, it. it's much easier. I mean, it's easy yeah. to tell the difference yeah. between someone who yeah. is someone who sincerely wants to make an effort and someone who, who does not want to make an effort. It's easy to yeah. tell the yeah. difference. Yeah, yeah. Trans Chat with Christiana. I thought we might, since it's uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. Yes. Um, yes. I thought that maybe we, you know, we might just could share a little bit about, you know, struggles that we might have had, um, you know, with mental health. Because, you know, come on, let's face it. If you're a trans person in this world, how can you not have issues with mental health? If you're in the closet, you can't transition. You're in anguish because you can't be yourself. Once you come out, you know, the world starts to not like you so much. So then you've got new sets of um, things that causes the depression and anxieties and things like that. So, um, you know, I just thought it might be neat if we, you know, maybe shared you know, stories a little bit and just sort of coping mechanisms. You know, how did we get through it? Um, you know, how do we survive? Sometimes when you're in the throes of one of those depression episodes, you know, I, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I get up there and I just I wonder if I'm going to wake up. But I, I, you know, I learned to, you know, reason it out and just re realize that, okay, partially it's probably hormones because I do get very kind of hormonal and have the mood swings and have the emotions and, and stuff. But, um, um, but, you know, it's, I think it's just, you know, just awareness. Um, um, I got so depressed and sort of just beside myself one time that my whole body literally broke out like in a rash. I had to go to a urgent care. Because my whole body, I literally just fretted myself into, into disease, basically, um, just because I was that. And that was when I got the news that we were coming back to Texas. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm not going to survive <laughs> going back to Texas. I, and at the time, I really didn't think I would. I was like, you know, I'm not, I can't stay here. I'm going to be leaving here, whether it's in my car or in a box. Um, you know, I'm going to be leaving this place. That's kind of how I felt. And I, so I just thought it was like a death sentence um, that, you know, that Jody was dragging me back to Texas. Um, but, you know, like I said, when you're trans, you had a lot of depression. I had so much depression before I transitioned. I didn't really realize it. Um, but I was really drinking and eating away, you know, my feelings and just about killed myself. <laughs> you know, I got up to 350 pounds and was incredibly unhealthy so um and it, but it wasn't easy to to kind of admit it and to seek help um that's hard and i think that you know for us trans ladies we're kind of we have that kind of residual male part of us that is like you got to just be stoic and you just got to tough it out you know you, you need come on reason it out you're not you don't have mental health come on so i think some of that sometimes kind of follows so it's hard <clears throat> you know the first few times i really like cried it was hard because before when i cried it something had to be seriously wrong you know i didn't just cry because of the ending of a movie or because of a sitcom or something like i do now um it was had to be serious so i had to get used to be like okay crying is okay it's okay not even not only is it okay it's actually very good very healthy so, um, but, but seeking help is the, is the tough part. And um, when we, when I finish, when I put this episode together, I'm going to put up resources, um, uh, you know, the, the, the um, suicide hotlines and Trevor project and some of these uh, resources that are available for trans people and, you know, LGBT, um, just, uh, cause you know, yeah, <laughs> like I said, I don't know how you can be a trans person in this world and not have some mental health issues. I suppose. I suppose. Um, I, I mean, I've, I've, I've come across. Uh, you know, I've obviously I dealt with my own mental health um, all my life, and um, I, I mean, I mean, there, there are some really um, good techniques like co cognitive behavioural therapy, mm -hmm. which, which I really think are, are really good techniques. So, so if you get negative, you keep having this negative thoughts. So you're just saying, "Hang on, it's this thought." Is this true? Is this just just to think it through and to turn it into something positive? The uh, one of the things uh, you said, Christy, approaching the subject is, well, there's two things that come to my mind was instantly was, uh, whenever we talk about something, and it sees the light of day, it doesn't have that a power over us on some things. 
like uh, my my secret of being trans or being uh, having gender dysphoria, I, I didn't let anybody know. I mean, I kept that hidden away early on, um, but nobody knew it. It's so when I did come out, it was just a complete surprise to my sibling, uh, my younger sister. She had no idea, and that's probably why she has trouble accepting today because I hid it so well. We did that. We were we're good at hiding things like that, especially the darkest secrets. And once it comes out. It doesn't have that power over us. Uh, I think it's so important that the W path standards of care include more mental health work, other than just getting your letters signed off by a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Now, in order to get those letters signed off, usually the therapist will say, well, "I need to see you for a number of times." I, I'm just you just can't just call me up and want a letter. You need to come in and we need to talk for a couple of sessions to see if I can diagnose you. And plus, getting a therapist that can diagnose somebody with gender dysphoria too, not somebody who doesn't know anything about transgenderism and just say, "Oh, it's a phase you're a glue out of." Uh, you know, here, take these pills, you'll feel better. That kind of garbage, you know. So, uh, mental health month. That's a good. That's a. This is this is square yeah. center, Christy, uh, with with kind of in line yeah. with the, our gender dysphoria. Yeah, awareness is you know, and and just getting over the stigma, um, you know, and getting over that fear that you know, gosh, if I go and seek mental health, then there must be something wrong with me, you know, there must be I must not be right, you know. So so you know, getting rid of that stigma, so that people will you know be willing to step up and seek help when they need it. Um, is huge. So yeah, I'm glad they do this now. Uh, you know, I don't remember this in, in previous years. I wonder if this is new or just in more need than ever this year. Because um, I'm sure a lot of people, you know, after pre after this pandemic and everything, are really having a lot of, you know, it's not just trans people with mental health issues out here. Yeah, that's true. I think I think as as time goes on, as I keep using the word enlightened or more, more things are fi found out or discovered. Are written about and as we grow we're learning about these things and then these new types of therapies that come available of ways of treating things and I'm not talking drugs it used to be if you remember years ago if you went to see a therapist it was usually a white male in a suit with a tie you know and it would be you sit he's sitting behind a desk which is just in itself is not conducive to any type of therapy and they would just diagnose you like a doctor you know, and you're supposed to spill your guts and how you feel to somebody who really doesn't have a vested interest in you. You know, so we, there needs that relationship needs to be built. I think over time, the therapy styles have changed. And I think it'll be true with gender dysphoria and I think uh, with our mental health. Um, and, you know, the, we have the dysphoria, but I don't feel comfortable of it being categorized as a, a mental health issue mm. because that, that would presuppose no, I mean, oh there's something wrong with you you need to be fixed mm. you know that type of thing but that could be my own prejudice I, that, that's, that's a really yeah yeah that's a really important issue because my my can my my counselor stephanie in in philadelphia um she this whole issue of mental health came up and she um and the, the american uh, body of psychiatrists that hadn't caught on that the World Health Organization had classed um, gender dysphoria as a, a as a sexual health uh, issue, and it was no longer um, a, a mental uh, um, a mental disorder. That's huge. That was hugely important for me, uh, and it's and it's, vi it's vital to my well my well being and my good fe my, my feel my my esteem of myself that. Um, that I, I, I people see me as of sound mind, um, so, so um, I think it's just think that that's very important for me. Yeah, I think that um, I'm glad. You know, I'm glad. Like I said, I'm glad that they're making it more um, understandable. You know, there's raising awareness. Um, you know, in mass, you know, mental health uh, month is good. You know, because. You know, you got to get rid of that stigma. I know, because I, I used to think the same way until I experienced it and sort of then you know so now i know and that it's not you know it's not my fault um sometimes it's situational um so but sometimes it's just um like katie said it's just a question of some um imbalances in the chemicals 
um, in the brain, and that's you know what a little you know, a little tiny uh, pill I take every day helps to helps to fix. Yeah, yeah. There, there, there was some um, Greta Thunberg who sailed across the Atlantic to go to the climate conference quite recently, and um, you know to address the to address the world leaders and um and uh, and, and some some right wing guy in america said um the uh, uh, so it was the, 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 I, I brought the doc, her documentary about doing this and it, and it showed this uh, this guy um saying um oh well, well there's, there's just this girl with mental health with with, with the mental illness and he was he was he, he, talk about stigma that he was trying to put on her. Oh, oh this, and because she has um, Asperger's, I think she, I think it's Asperger's that mm. she had. And and this guy was saying, well, she's just got a mental illness. And I thought, hang on a minute, <laughs> she's trying to save the planet. You know, she she's a set, really sensitive, really sensitive, um, deeply feeling. Uh, obviously intelligent person with that happens to have Asperger's and this guy was saying I just it was just unbelievable that he, he would treat a young girl like that who who was who an exceptional young girl who was trying to save the planet. I I think I, I think if I was a bloke I would have I would got my handbag out and um kind of um yeah yeah, to take American up. politicians have no class, you know, <laughs> in, anymore. No. Well, I mean, some. I, that's not. I don't, I don't generalize, but some. There are <sighs> some people in there. They're just absolutely insane. They just they do insane things and they say insane shit all the time, um, and just like that, just like that. I I too remember somebody, you know, just referring to her as you know just some girl with with mental health issues or with a mental illness or something like that. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's welcome to America. Thank you for listening and supporting the trans community. If you would like to help support the podcast, visit us on Patreon and consider becoming a patron. Your patronage will give you access to early episodes, merchandise, and exclusives and will go a long way in helping us continue to grow, inform, and inspire the trans community and our allies. If you would like to share your story, visit us on Facebook at Trans Chat with Christiana and leave us a message. You matter, and your story deserves to be told. As always, a big thanks to our listeners worldwide and a super big shout out to our Trans Chat Ultimate supporter, Marcy Sandals. And if you are suffering from severe depression or anxiety, please seek help. Resources are more abundant these days than ever. And believe me, your friends and family would rather know about your mental health issues and see you alive than be blissfully ignorant and have to attend your funeral. Thanks again for listening to Trans Chat, brought to you in part by True Voice Lessons, LLC. Take care, be safe, be you, and be proud. We'll be okay.